that, that small uh, memorial turned into day laborers stopping by and asking what else they could do. Before you know it, we put up a, a beautiful, lasting memorial from businesses in the community and from neighborhood residents. Uh, and and, and we, we put uh, one cobblestone for each firefighter. Uh, there was 343 cobblestones were placed there uh, as a lasting memorial. These are the neighbors that uh, people uh, seem to be complaining about. Uh, uh, oh, I lost my papers. But anyway, so um, I scribbled outside here before I came here today. Like I said, I'm passionate about my community. Uh, it's not just the Mexican immigrants that are helping us out, right? In, in, at uh, 10 years, 20 years ago, when the mall opened, uh, a lot of people, businesses left, and then it was also, I believe, it was like a white flight type of a thing. Black families, lower income people moved in, and, and a lot of the people left. Not the majority, not the people as passionate as me, and a lot of them still remain businesses and stuff like that there. But from 30% occupancy that I experienced as a firefighter, and I see now it's over 90% occupied. These are businesses that are paying taxes and, and, and giving to the community. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful place. I, I can live any place in the country after retiring from the fire department. When you're as a firefighter, they tell you you can't live without in the city. And that was probably part of the reason I wanted to leave. Once I retired, I looked around and I said, there is no place that can match the community spirit, as far as I'm concerned, the community spirit, the, the grassroots, uh, I don't know, I, I'm lost for words right now, but all I can say is Port Richmond is a wonderful place and your help is ex extremely needed in our neighborhood. There's a million things that can be done. Uh, the people could be organized and they're willing and ready to work. They just need the direction and, and, and the resources uh, to go. Recently, there's been a lot of bad publicity about uh, crimes on Mexicans and stuff like that. A lot of these crimes are being overstated by the press, although they do exist. Some of them are crimes of opportunity. Uh, I, I just, we really need help now before this Port Richmond heads another way and people seek other means of banding together to defend themselves. Right now we have a good police presence and, uh, and people like you can definitely make a change in what I can see as one of the best communities in the, in the country, if not the world. So thank you for your time. And mm -hmm. <laughs> Now I'd like to call up Gonzalo Mercado from El Centro de Hospitalidad, one of the groups that works um, in the community. Thank you, Lori. Um, just wanted to start by uh, talking a little bit about our history. El Centro actually started, right now it's called El Centro del Inmigrante, and we always are ask, uh, ask questions of what's the real name, but basically El Centro was born in 1997. Uh, it was a collaboration of the Latino Civic Association, uh, Project Hospitality, and uh, St. Mary's of the Assumption Church, which you heard uh, was built uh, many, many years ago. Um, El Centro was uh, basically opened because uh, there were a lot of people coming in, mainly Mexican day laborers, uh, who were uh, coming here seasonally uh, with injuries, uh, with problems of, uh, um, uh, discrimination, exploitation, and, and you know, the people got together and they, they, they knew that they needed to do something. So El Centro was created and basically became a, a part of a, a program of Project Hospitality. Um, I, ca I came on board in 2004, I started working on Project Hospitality, and then uh, the next following years, one of the things that um, I was basically charged with is helping in the um, uh, basically making El Centro its own agency because we you know we knew that PH did a lot of good things but El Centro basically had its own vision and, and, and we started to uh, learn more about it as people started to get organized and we started to get to know more about the issues in the community. Uh, so in 2008 El Centro became its own uh, standing alone 501c3 organization which is called El Centro del Inmigrante. Um, and we raise hospitalidad basically not because we don't like PH, but just to make the distinction that there are two separate agencies uh, today. Um, so um, El Centro right now uh, it has four main issue areas, uh, which are education. Uh, and in our education department, we have uh, three uh, English as a second language classes, three uh, levels. Uh, we have a, a, a Spanish GED uh, also open for the community. Um, we have a alphabetization class. We have a lot of, uh, of the immigrants that um, right now are not all from Mexico. In the beginning, they were all from Mexico, but we actually started to see a lot of diversity in terms of the people coming in. Um, and uh, I would say probably 20% of, of, of the workers uh, 
came from very rural areas in Mexico where they did not have access to a formal education in many cases, uh, and also were uh, part of uh, the very ancient ethnic groups that did not speak Spanish. So they were basically coming here with, without speaking Spanish. Um, they spoke uh, ancient Mayan languages, uh, actually. So uh, we knew that we needed to have a program also to help uh, bring those people up uh, uh, to uh, their new life here. Um, so that's our, our, our education area. And in terms of our services, uh, we provide a variety of services also for the community from uh, helping translate a letter somebody got on the mail that doesn't know what it is uh, to more uh, um, you know, difficult issues like, for example, uh, HIV prevention in a community which uh, uh, is very hard to talk many cases about sex because of their uh, culture um, and sorry, their religions. Um, but also that we started to see issues of domestic violence, uh, so we, we needed to uh, have those services there to make sure that people came, can come in or had a place where to go, uh, especially when you know, new immigrants feel very, very disoriented, they don't know really what to do uh, in those cases. Um, also, one of our latest uh, um, additions to our programs is actually our cultural arm. Uh, they basically grew out, out of our English class where uh, many uh, students that were from different countries in Latin America got together. Uh, we got together with the Council of Arts and Humanities of Staten Island uh, and we created a Latino folklorico dance group. Um, actually, last yesterday they performed up for the first time at the Mexican Independence Day Parade in Manhattan, so they were all really excited. Uh, but basically, the, 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 the role of this group is uh, themselves uh, show each other different dances. You know, we have different uh, dances from Colombia, Ecuador, uh, Peru, uh, Central America, Mexico, obviously. Uh, and then the students themselves teach each other these dances with some help from the council. Uh, and also we have a, 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 a production of the dresses, the dresses. So basically the ladies make their own dresses and there is a lot of uh, 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 activity going on there, especially where we can make sure that people don't lose their heritage uh, they can, we can keep those traditions alive, especially with the new generations, their own children that sometimes uh, 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 don't know much about their countries of origin or the culture of their, of their parents. So we want to make sure that we cre uh, keep that alive. Um, and then lastly, we have our um, advoc advocacy and organizing um, uh, part of our programs. And basically, we have a workers uh, uh, committee. Uh, we provide, and, and, and uh, since the beginning, our, our, our role is to provide the tools for people so they can organize themselves, create their own leadership, and we, we, we are there as a support. Uh, uh, we are very uh, mindful of, of how uh, communities can come together uh, and providing the leadership for people to do it, uh, as opposed to us coming there and, hey, you know, this is what we're going to do. Um, the majority of our board of directories uh, is comprised by day laborers and immigrant uh, members of the community, uh, and, and, and our, in, in our mission statement, that's, that's one of our, uh, our priorities. Um, so we work around a, 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 a variety of issues uh, during, with this committee, basically, uh, in terms of uh, health and safety at the workplace, for example, which many immigrants don't uh, have the privilege to have. Um, uh, wage and hour violations, huge issues of uh, workers not getting paid, getting paid less than what the minimum wage is, uh, uh, or issues of uh, exploitation, people working 80 hours a week and not getting paid for that, um, people getting injured and sometimes uh, people are getting killed at, at, the, at the job place and you know, making sure that we provide the support for those families uh, and also we provide uh, assistance to those workers who get injured. Um, then you know we, we have a lot of issues with, our, with the youth and the young people also as well. Uh, uh, many of, of, of the families that we work with, we you know uh, uh, call them uh, mixed families, and, and by that I mean uh, uh, obviously we all know that uh, one of the main issues in the Mexican community is many of them are undocumented. Uh, and when you have uh, you know a family, when you have two kids who are documented, who were born here basically, and you have two or three others who were not, were you know brought from their homes. Uh, there is a lot of issues that start to arise there with some kids having all the opportunities of the world and then other kids in the family uh, basically not having a future uh, or you know saying you know if I'm you know gonna go to work when I turn 18 why don't I start working right now so they don't finish uh, high school they don't finish they don't go to college and there's a lot of uh, problems especially for those families uh, trying to deal, deal with these issues uh, while they're trying to take care of their own families.